how did the Duke City Diaries documentary series come about? Duke City Diaries started as a way to explore the city of Albuquerque and the people within it. But one of the main reasons it started was a lot of people were asking me about my subjects and my still photos and my portraits. And they were asking me, who are these people? Where, where do they live? Where do they come from? Do they know this person? I think I know that person. What do they do? And I'm like, you know what? I don't really know, but maybe I should start to ask those questions to the subjects themselves because rather than me answering those questions, it should be the subject answering those questions for themselves. So. What happened when you engaged Carlos around taking his portrait? I saw Carlos at UNM, on the UNM campus. He was just driving around and um, I saw he had two different colored eyes and that's kind of like a portrait photographer's dream, right? You see, a, you see someone with two different colored eyes and you're like, hey, you know what, that's, that's really striking. I have to capture that. He actually said no at first, but he gave me his contact info. So I was just going back and forth with him over like several months. And then um, he finally said yes. He's like, you know what, just come over to my house. We'll take some photos. And I was like, thank you so much. Thanks for letting me do this. And this was at Carlos's house here in Albuquerque that I took this portrait. What about Carlos's voice resonates with you? When I took this portrait, Carlos gave me a little bit of his story about growing up here in Albuquerque. So I felt that it would be very fitting for me to do a short documentary on his life. And that's what happened after, a, a, about a couple weeks after this portrait is when I did one of the first um, short documentaries where I had a subject speak for themselves outside of a still image. And Carlos said uh, he, he witnessed his father uh, die by gunfire from a police officer that, that shot him because his, um, his stepfather was holding his brother hostage. And I do not know what something like that would feel like. I've never had that type of experience, but I knew that an audience might be able to connect with that because there's other people that might have lived through similar things with domestic issues or mm -hmm. family things that um, I really can't touch base on that because I haven't lived through it, but I might be able to find a subject that might be able to speak on that. And I think that's important to create that connection. What is important about creating that connection? What, uh, does, it, what does it do? I think it makes someone feel a little bit more whole having that connection with someone knowing that they've lived through that exact experience. It's, it's just that, that basic feeling of, hey, you know what, that person's done that thing or that person's been through the same thing that I went through. I have a connection with this person. I feel like I know this person and I have a little bit more comfort and I feel a little bit more warm. Um, I feel a little bit more at, at home now because I, I know that I'm not the only one that has to deal with something. So I think that's important. It's on the process of, I think, with, with healing and things like that. How do you get them to share and tell you, invite you into their world for these stories to be shared? It's just simple questions, asking them different things that I would just ask like a family member or a friend, like starting with a certain memory that maybe is relatable. Where did you go to school? What was it like dealing with this situation with your family member? I kind of have the same feeling with this and that and what's your take on this? So it's a lot of um, asking questions in a conversational manner that's really not imposing, but in a way that invites someone in in a, in a gentle manner and then just letting it do its own thing. So can I get an example maybe of what that conversation looks like? Like I want to take your picture and turn you into a documentary <laughs> subject. Right. What's an example of that? Yeah, I think, um, it's a process for sure. Sometimes my subjects, they're, they're kind of iffy about it and you know, I don't want to force anyone to do anything. So I'll kind of ask them, hey, you know what? I think it's important that you explain what it's like to be New Mexican because that's kind of the like overriding theme that always pops up is what is it like to be someone that's born and raised in New Mexico? I don't know what that feels like, but I'm very fascinated with that because I live here in this beautiful place. Um, you, the, someone that's been here forever, what's it like? What are some of the hardships that you've had to deal with along the way? 
Right. So that, that's kind of like the main thing that, that always pops up is being New Mexican. Like that's the main cultural identifier. Like I said before, it's like, I've asked my subjects this, like, hey, like, what's your culture? What's your ethnicity? Me thinking that they're going to say Latino or Hispanic, the first thing they say is I'm New Mexican. And I never saw that before in different states. I used to live in Chicago. I never heard someone say, oh, well, first and foremost, I'm a Chicagoan or I'm from Illinois. Like, right. it's really interesting that here that that's a primary um, or that's one of the main ways that people, that some people identify with their space here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you plan on continuing the Duke City Diary series? Uh, no, it's, it's actually done because <laughs> okay. I've done a lot of stuff here in the city and I'm actually starting to go to different places in New Mexico, not just Albuquerque. So I've done stuff in um, Artesia where this photo was taken from. So um, Artesia, I'm starting to go to different places around like the US Mexico border. So like parts of El Paso, which kind of bleeds into New Mexico, but since I'm going to different locations, it wouldn't be fitting to use Duke City Diaries since that kind of is like uh, only for Albuquerque, right? It's Duke City, so, but maybe who knows in the future if, if I do something in the city again, it, it could be brought back, so. What's yeah. next for you, Frank Blasquez, and what should your fans be looking out for? Oh, thanks. Um, some of the things that are coming up would have to deal with my fine art photography, with my still photography, with my portraits. I'll be at the Smithsonian in April of 2022. Um, that opens up at the Outwin uh, Triennial Portrait Competition. So that's one of the next things that are coming up uh, for my fine art portraits. For my movies, I'm working on um, some different subject matter uh, within the state of New Mexico that deals with um, crime, incarceration, uh, stories that deal with people that are um, in prison right now that are dealing with those things and uh, what that's like specifically here in the state in New Mexico, so. Much respect to you for the triumph of healing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. Thanks a lot.